Hi, my name is Mike Hayton from the UK. I want to show you a thumb MP joint fusion in a case that I did along with a trapeziectomy at the same time. So this was a female in her mid 60s with pain at the thumb CMC joint and MP joint. She had pantrapezial OA, hyperextending thumb MP joint, lacks ulnar collateral ligament and no DC deformity. And here's a radiograph showing the pantrapezial OA and the hyperextending thumb MP joint. In this case, uh, we're just going to, this video is going to show just the thumb MP joint uh, fusion. You can see she's got a chronically lax UCL and hyperextends. So what I like to do is blunt dissection down through the skin. So then you're on the back of the tendons and the fascia. And then distally make an incision below the level of the joint. You can AP glide to find where the joint is. Make a small incision down to bone. So you're below the capsule and then get a, a, a pair of scissors, blunt scissors, tenotomies. Just pass it through that little window against bone and then spread. And what this will do is it will just open up the tendon interval above you, leaving the capsule below intact. This is a really nice technique just to spread the overlying interval between the two tendons and the fascia from the underlying joint. There you can see the capsule still intact, having retracted the extensor tendons. So we put a retractor in and then we make a midline capsulotomy along the line of the dorsal joint. We don't need to be too careful with the underlying cartilage because we are fusing the joint. Pierce the joint, pull up away from the joint and there's the joint exposed. And then we, it's a simple case now of peeling off the soft tissues distally then proximally inside the joint, releasing the radial collateral ligament, releasing it distally, and then proximally. Staying close against bone, it's a really quite a, a bulky structure is the radial and ulnar collateral ligament. And once you've released it off, that radial side of the joint will just open up. And there, the last few fibers of the radial collateral ligament being released. Your attention now turns to the ulnar side of the joint. It's a very similar technique, keeping the knife against bone, just releasing the structures, the soft tissue off the bone distally. It's coming away really quite easily in this case. And then proximally, the dorsal capsule, and then bring the knife in round the ulnar side of the joint, releasing the very, very thick ulnar collateral ligament. When in this case, as we know, was chronically lax, presumably through a previous rupture, but releasing it from its footprint proximally. And there you can see the white ulnar collateral ligament just being released away from the bone. So once the collateral ligaments have been released, the joint is exposed and you can see it's degenerate. You can see the ebonation, loss of articular cartilage, particularly on the radial side of the base of the proximal phalanx, that radial, uh, radial volar corner and the dorsal aspect. So we're going to reduce the joint now just to see the position we'd like to do the thumb MP joint fusion. And it's usually probably about 30 degrees of flexion. As you can see, I've already performed a trapeziectomy on this patient earlier. We deliver the, the joint. And there's a variety of techniques. I like to use bone nibblers if I can. It keeps the, the heat down, avoids thermal necrosis of the bone. And you just gradually work your way around, removing the articular cartilage, exposing bleeding subchondral bone off the metacarpal head. 
and here we can see we've taken off the vast majority of the articular cartilage down to nice cancellous bone and then our attention turns distally to the base of the proximal phalanx some bone nibblers just getting it started using some slightly different bone nibblers they can come in quite flat and then just remove that articular cartilage down to bleeding cancellous bone once it's all been prepared I like to use a KY just to make multiple small drill holes just two or three millimeters into the subchondral bone and this will just induce bleeding vascular channels osseous channels just to increase the surface area for bony contact and i'll do this in lots of areas where i do fusions so it's a sort of the pepper pot technique then I reduce the thumb joint just to make sure it sits nicely. 30 degrees of flexion. It's going to give me a little bit of a dorsal defect, which I'm going to bone graft in. Now, I take a K-wire 1.6 transversely across the base of the proximal phalanx. From the radial to the ulnar side. Sometimes you just have to dissect where that K-wire has gone. This makes a small drill hole. And then down through that drill hole, I pass some fine dental wire pull it through so that's running transversely across the base of the proximal phalanx and then i use two k wires i pass them in a retrograde fashion the first one's passed and then try and get them parallel if you can sometimes you can sometimes you can't But starting in the center of the joint allows you to be accurate in, in where your wires are going to be placed. And again, passing them retrograde and then pull them back. Just pull them back so that they're just exposed through the articular surface there. Pull this one back and then reduce the thumb MP joint onto the wires. I've, I've changed direction now, I've moved my head slightly. And then I'm compressing with my left thumb onto the wires. You gotta be careful that you don't break that dental wire. And once you've got that, just check the stability, check it under X-ray control. And you can see there's a small bony defect dorsally so I'm going to use some of this patient's previous trapezium just to bone graft that dorsal aspect. Just fill it in with bits of cancellous bone. And once you're happy with that and you've checked it all under x-ray, you can now do a tension band wire technique. Figure of eight. Pass the wire around the back of the two K wires, pull them tight, snug down against bone. And then this is a nice technique that I like to use. Bring the two wires together and then pass them down into your wire driver, but really carefully grip the two wires, pull to tension and then allow the power to give you a really nice tight knot cut it short and then lie that flat down against bone usually distally and it's very rare that this needs to be removed lie it flat against the bone cut the two k wires off 
two or three millimeters just so that your tension band doesn't slip over the top. And then once you've done that, it's just a very simple case of repairing your capsule. Because remember earlier, we got that nice separate capsular layer. And in this particular case, we're able to put three capsular sutures, which I think is extra padding over the back of the metalwork. There's the capsule. Tie the first one off. And as you can see, this patient's had a previous trapeziectomy earlier. And that's on another of my videos on YouTube. Just tie that off. And here's a second suture for the capsule. And I think this is, is a really nice technique to, to separate the capsule as a separate layer. It's just added padding over those wires. And then this is a third capsule suture. And then you want to repair the extensor tendons. And because we split the interval, there's a small soft tissue rim between the two. I'm burying my knots here down away from the skin, just so they won't cause any irritation of any small superficial overlying cutaneous nerves. And you've heard me talk before about putting your knot next to the least offended relative. So in this case, the least offended relative would be the capsule as opposed to a, a superficial cutaneous nerve that might be irritated. So wherever you're putting your knots, always think about where you're going to put your knot, deep or superficial. And in this case, we're putting it deep. And we're going to put a few of these interrupted sutures. Just bring the two extensor tendons together. And then once we're happy with that repair, we'll then just run a subcuticular suture along the skin. Much the same way as you can see there, what I've done on my trapeziectomy. And I like to use subcuticular vicorapi because they don't need suture removal at two weeks. So these patients will be discharged home in a back slab or a volar slab to be seen by my hand therapist after about a week, put into a thermoplastic splint for somewhere between six and eight weeks, and then be seen in my clinic somewhere between eight and 12 weeks with an X-ray on arrival and hopefully by then they will have had nice bone union, be well on the way with rehab and hopefully able to be discharged. On table, patients being fixed at about 30 to 40 degrees, just check the position. She can get her thumb pulled to all her fingers, feels nice and solid. She's immobilized for a back slab for a week, then a splint. And here's an X-ray at 10 weeks showing an adequate uh, resection of the trapezium and nice parallel k wires with a tension ten band. Weeks post -op. Uh, how's the here she is at 10 weeks. Of your thumb and in the thumb knuckle joint. Much better. Thanks, Ron. Excellent. Turn your hand over for me now, palm up. And then uh, touch the thumb to the tip of the little finger. And then just work it down the little finger down into the base. And then just start to circumduct your thumb around. So it'll wiggle your thumb around. Okay, thanks. So thanks for watching and I hope you found this as a very simple and relatively cheap technique for a thumb MP joint fusion.